Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for Sunday, November 28th, 2021. This is Deacon Barry Taylor, and we will be studying our final lesson for the fall quarter, lesson 13. Uh, we're in, still in unit three, which is entitled Visions of Praise, Visions of Praise. From the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, our lesson title is No Difference no difference. Our devotional reading comes from Acts chapter 15 verses 6 to 18. Our background scripture comes from Acts chapter 10 verses 34 to 47. And our printed passage, which is also our lesson text, comes from Acts chapter 10 verses 34 to 47. Our key verse is Acts chapter 10 verses 34 and 35, which reads, Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The lesson aims from the quarterly or number one, explore the gift of the Holy Spirit in your lives. Number two, value the leadership of Peter in the early church and his relationship with Christ. And number three, spread the good news that Christ is for all who want to know him. Amen, amen. After the introduction, the quarterly lesson has two major divisions. The first is entitled, The Gospel for All. That's covered between Acts chapter 10, verses 34 and 40. And the second division is entitled, The Gospel to All. And that's covered between verses 41 and 47. From the standard commentary, the lesson title is Good News for All. Good News for All. Additional aims are, number one, summarize how God welcomed the Gentiles into his kingdom. Number two, explain his or her identity with Gentiles in that regard. That's easy for us since most of us are Gentiles. And then number three, role play an evangel evangelistic encounter with an unbeliever. Uh, Andrew commentary outline has two major divisions. The first is Peter's message, covered between Acts chapter 10, verses 34 and 43. And the second is entitled Two Outcomes, covered between verses 44 and 47. Uh, we're going to give a little background, uh, have a brief word of prayer, and then get right into our lesson. I pray all of you have had a blessed Thanksgiving uh, and, uh, and still rejoicing in all that God has provided, the abundance that God has provided in our lives. We are um, uh, really picking up in a, a passage that starts in Acts chapter 10 uh, verse 1 and continues through Acts chapter 11 verse 18. Uh, those who are familiar with Acts know that uh, in the first part of Acts uh, the Lord sends angels to a, a Gentile centurion um, uh, Cornelius who has described as a uh, the one that feared God and uh, was very good to the Jewish people uh, and really desirous uh, apparently of knowing uh, more about uh, this this gospel which no doubt he had heard of so God sends angels to him and tells him to send for Peter the Apostle Peter who is at Joppa uh, and uh, he does so uh, at the same time God uh, allows Peter uh, uh, to have some visions uh, while he is famished. He's waiting for food to be prepared and he's famished. And if you recall, God lures a sheet with all kinds of animals uh, and tells him to arise, slay and eat. Uh, and Peter says, not so Lord, which is an oxymoron, not so Lord. <laughs> for nothing unclean is entered into my mouth. Well, the Lord repeats that a couple of times. 
And then finally says, what I have called unclean, or what I have declared clean, don't you call unclean. So that was a vision that Peter did not understand, fully understand, until he got to uh, Cornelius' house. Cornelius did dispatch servants to go to Joppa, which was about 30 miles from Caesarea, down the coastline. Uh, they found Peter uh, at Simon's house, and, uh, and th on the next day, Peter agreed to go with him to Cornelius' house. And in the meantime, Cornelius had gathered uh, his family, all of his family, into his house. And when Peter and six uh, others that arrived with him, uh, six other uh, Jewish uh, acquaintances or accompany the men that accompanied him, arrived, uh, Cornelius explained the vision that the Lord, uh, not the vision, but the angels that the Lord had sent to him. And he uh, asked him what, what would he say to them. And then Peter uh, shared what uh, the visions that the Lord had uh, given him. And then that's where our lesson picks up. It picks up when Peter uh, begins to preach, if you will, uh, to Cornelius and his household. So Father, we do thank and praise you for yet another opportunity to study your precious word. Lord, as always, while we are studying a familiar passage, we know, Lord, that there's greater understanding, deeper understanding of this passage that you would give us, Lord, that you would impress on us, Lord, certainly in this day, Lord, when so much is being made about race and about uh, culture, so many things that are being raised to divide us, to further divide us, Lord, that we can have unity in Christ regardless of, of our color, regardless of our eth ethnic, ethnicity, regardless of our nation, our background. We can have unity in Christ. We are one family in you. Uh, we are bound by your spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord, uh, that you, as you declared that uh, Abraham, that his deceit, his descendants rather, would be a blessing to all the world, that you've done that in Christ, Lord, you've blessed the entire world through Christ, and Lord, that we know that all, as you've said, whosoever believes uh, would have eternal life. We thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity. We thank you for your abundant blessings, Lord, throughout this year. Lord, we thank you for the, the mountains and the valleys. We thank you for the sunshine and the rain. We thank you for those things that have drawn us closer to you, Lord, and have caused us to depend more heavily on you and your Holy Spirit for strength and for guidance, Lord. And now, Lord, we pray uh, we, we pray that all who are within the sound of my voice, Lord, will be blessed by what we learn today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to jump right in. Uh, and do our verse by verse and I think we're going to look at uh, the divisions which seem to be uh, the same uh, pretty much um, from the standard I'm sorry from the quarterly the first division is the gospel for all this cover between verses 34 and 40 from the standard, the first division is Peter's message. That's covered between 34 and 43. So we're going to just start uh, reading the first passage from this uh, quarterly and have some verse-by-verse -verse discussion, and we'll pick up at 41 and read through 43 and have discussion on those verses as well. So from the first division, and I'm going to read from the uh, King James Version. We may. Uh, Reread some of the verses uh, from the NIV for clarity, but uh, let's start at least with the uh, King James Version. So, verse beginning at verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. 
for God was with him. And we are his witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, and uh, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Okay, so we're going to stop there at verse 40. We're going to back up and have some verse-by-verse -verse discussion. So again, verse 34 reads, Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. From the NIV, then Peter began to speak, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. Now, um, again, both Cornelius and Peter have exchanged how God has uh, intervened, how God sent angels to Cornelius and how he gave uh, Peter the visions and what brought them together. And now uh, Cornelius and his household are waiting to hear what God has laid on Peter's heart to share with them or what God has given Peter to share with them. And so first thing Peter observes uh, on the basis of the visions that God showed him and uh, his declaration that what he declares clean don't call unclean uh, and what uh, obviously uh, he believes that uh, Cornelius was uh, sent, that angels were sent to him and, and that uh, he obeyed um, the angels and sent for him in Joppa and so he's recognizing that this is a work of God and uh, to this point uh, Peter is a Jew, I mean, and a typical Jew, uh, other than being, of course, saved and an apostle, uh, but he has a Jewish background, and the Jews have been taught from their youth uh, that uh, the Gentiles were dogs, that the Gentiles were unclean, that they would have no association with them, they certainly were not to go into their house, uh, and they just believed that they were not in God's economy, period, that God didn't care anything about them, that uh, the Jews were the chosen people. Uh, even when uh, when Jesus had told them that they would go into all the earth, we'll say more about this, uh, and preach to all people, uh, no doubt the Jewish believers thought they meant, that he meant all Jewish people, <laughs> not the Gentiles. So uh, he's come to the realization that Hey, God has opened up uh, this gospel, this good news uh, of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And by his death, by his sacrifice, uh, we can be delivered from our, our sins, or the penalty of sin, power of sin, and the presence of sin. Uh, in other words, we can be saved. Uh, and so Peter declares that God is not a respecter of person. God is not partial. He is not showing partiality to the Jews, but he is the God of all people, as Peter will declare in a subsequent verse. Verse 35, But in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted of him. Now this word translated nation means every people group. It's not talking about nationalities necessarily. But it's talking about um, uh, people, groups, uh, ethno ethnicities, and uh, 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 and religious groups as well. But he says <clears throat> he's recognized that God uh, is not going to disqualify people on the basis of their background or their race or uh, uh, anything that perhaps they have no control over. But God is going to distinguish them by whether they fear him, reverence him, and of course fear judgment, fear his judgment, uh, and that they've demonstrated this fear by obeying him. Uh, that is what uh, is going to, uh, if you will, uh, God is going to recognize people by or accept people because of, okay, and anyone that... Uh, rejects God, of course, God cannot accept. Uh, but those who seek him, God, uh, those who uh, work righteousness or attend, intend to attempt to live right, do the right things, the NIV rendering of that verse is, but accepts 
from every nation the ones who fear him and does what is right. That's righteousness when we talk about worketh righteousness. They just do what is right and accepts him or believes in him. Let's move on to verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. In parentheses, he is Lord of all. Okay, now um, this word which God preached or God sent, if you will, to the children of Israel is the gospel, the good news. And yes, the Lord Jesus focused primarily on the Gentile or the Jews rather during his earthly ministry. We know that he uh, he did heal uh, the child of the centurion. Uh, we know that he. Uh, he had interaction with the Samaritan woman and other uh, others, but he was sent primarily to the household of, of Israel. But that did not mean that this gospel that he preached was not to go into Samaria and, to, and throughout Judea, into Samaria, into all the uh, all the earth, as he declared in Acts chapter one, just before his ascension. And uh, and so he says this. This word that he preached, that gave to the, I said rather to the children of Israel or the Jews, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. This peace that he preached by Jesus Christ or that Jesus Christ preached was first and foremost peace uh, between God and sinful men. Okay, it was the peace that uh, that uh, that between God and man, if you will. Uh, but also the peace between man and man. And we'll see that uh, as we get further into the lesson. We'll take a look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 in particular. And actually Romans chapter 5, verse 1. We'll speak about those in just a minute. Uh, but let me just say in parentheses, he says he is Lord of all. So he's recognizing that Jesus, uh, who who's got his God incarnate is not just the God of the Jewish people, but he is Lord, he is controller, he is master of all of his creation. Okay? Uh, and, and so again, uh, let's remember that uh, God, when God called Abraham, uh, he said, way back in Genesis chapter 12, go back to Genesis chapter 12, look at verses 2 and 3. He said that through his descendants, he was going to bless all nations, okay? And we know that uh, that blessing came through, was fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at uh, Luke chapter 4, verses four, uh, 18 to 21. So um, that... Uh, when he says also about the peace, again, I, I, we look at Romans chapter five, verse one, and we're gonna, we're not gonna uh, belong this. I, I'm sorry, prolong this rather. But these, uh, some of these reference scriptures are very important to give us greater understanding of uh, our lesson text. So Romans chapter five, verse one says, therefore being justified by faith or given a right standing by faith or saved by faith, we have peace with God, okay, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we have made peace, sinful man has uh, made peace with God or made, been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ and that is by his salvation, by his sacrificial death on our behalf. And flipping over to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14, he says, For he is our peace, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is our peace who hath made both one, who is both, both Jew and Gentile. And every people group that was not Jewish was considered Gentile. He has made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition. Okay, petition, let's go on to 15, it says, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments containing, contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain of the two one new man, so making peace. We are all uh, believers in Christ, and we are considered one in terms of 
uh, ethnicity, we're all the same. No, there's, there's no Jew, there's no Gentile, there's no male, no female, no rich, no bond, no free. We're all uh, united in Christ and by his spirit. So let's move on to verse 37. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Again, that word, he said, ye know, that word is the gospel, which they had heard about. Now they didn't, it, it hadn't been explained, perhaps it's certainly not fully to them. They did not understand it as well as Peter is going to explain it to them uh, in this setting but they had heard of it. Uh, it had been uh, uh, again published about uh, from throughout all Judea and it began in Galilee after the Lord's resurrection he met his disciples the apostles in Galilee okay but it actually began with the forerunner of Jesus Christ and that is John the Baptist preaching uh, baptism for repentance Remember, he came to prepare a people for the coming of the Lord, and his baptism was unto repentance. He said, repent of your sin and get ready for the coming of the Lord, of the Messiah. Okay, so uh, no doubt, again, Cornelius <clears throat> and perhaps members of his household had heard of the gospel, but they didn't fully understand it, and so that is why uh, the angels had him sent for Peter so that he could explain the gospel to them. Let's move on to verse 38a and it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth which with the Holy Ghost and with power. That word, that gospel included uh, the messiahship if you will of Jesus and he says Jesus of Nazareth and they that was what he was called. They were, that name was not an uncommon name. It was fairly common. So they distinguished Jesus, uh, who was the Messiah, by calling him Jesus of Nazareth. And that name was known throughout all Judea by this time. So God had anointed him. And that means, you know, he was, the Messiah means anointed. So God had made him Messiah with the Holy Ghost and with power. We're going to turn over to uh, Luke chapter 4, four and read uh, 14 and uh, maybe a few verses beyond. So we, we remember uh, after the baptism, Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist, uh, he was uh, led of the Spirit into the wilderness uh, where he fasted for 40 days and was tempted of Satan. And you know how he uh, dealt with Satan. In verse 13 says, uh, uh, and this is verse, Luke verse, chapter 4 rather. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. Verse 14 then says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the regions round about. So he came in the power of of the Holy Spirit having been uh, validated uh, through this wilderness temptation he came in the power of the Spirit of God and his fame went about of course he was uh, performing all types of miracles physical healings as well as spiritual healings releasing uh, many from demons uh, but uh, also with the power Part B of that verse reads, Who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devils, for God was with him. Again, uh, he did nothing but good. Uh, that's, that's uh, again, what was it, what was it, his fame was attributed to, rather, his doing good and his healing. Again, not only the physical healing, but the oppressed of the devil of those who were demon-possessed. And, and he says, for God was with him. The power of God was with him. Okay, And him being God incarnate, uh, and he, he had only set aside, he had set aside uh, 
his divine attributes, but the power was available to him whenever he chose to use it. But he did not perform miracles and uh, for uh, uh, no specific purpose. I mean, he intended the miracles to validate his words, the power of his words, which were the gospel. And actually to validate who he was. Uh, John 14, uh, 11 says, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. What works are those? The miracles. The miracles of physical healings, releasing of the spiritual healings, releasing those that were in bondage to demons from, uh, from that bondage. Let's move on to verse 39. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on the tree. Let me read that from the NIV. Verse 39 reads, We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. So he is one of many witnesses. In fact, he was one of the closest to Jesus during his earthly ministry. So he could bear witness uh, of many things uh, that he uh, actually experienced with Jesus. And he's going to go on to get a little more specific here. But he said they were witnesses throughout his earthly ministry in the countryside, Judea and Jerusalem. And he said, and he, he points a finger directly at the Jews. He said, at the, of the Jews and in Jerusalem, they killed him. He's talking about the Jews, not the Romans. Now, the Romans were certainly the instrument, but the Jews were the force behind the instrument to kill Jesus. So he is accusing them of killing Jesus by hanging him on the cross. And of course, Cornelia knows about this. But he is reviewing uh, what uh, he is reviewing what Jesus did, and, and 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 actually, and that the reason for him doing it was to provide access to God, was to provide reconciliation between men, all men and God, not just the Jews. So verse forty a says, "Him God raised up the third day." Okay, uh, we know that uh, uh, that Jesus said that he would be raised the third day. Uh, and his resurrection confirms, confirmed rather, that Jesus was the Son of God. We're going to take a look at Romans chapter 1 verse 4, which reads, well, let me go back to verse 3. It says, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, verse 4, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So the resurrection from the dead proved that he was the Son of God, okay? In fact, the second person of the Godhead of the Trinity. Uh, and that is what he is saying here. That's what Peter is saying here, that he... Uh, that he was raised on the third day. And again, as I said, um, well, let, let me move on to, to part B. It says, and showed him openly. So God raised him, validating him as his son. And then, uh, and, and actually uh, showed him openly. Now, uh, this thing was not, was not, um, something that was just rumored it was not something that uh was mythical uh it was an, an actually happened and god chose as peter will say in the next verse certain witnesses to witnesses and those witnesses were believers he did not uh, show himself to the unbelievers who had uh accused him of all kinds of things and even working miracles by the power of beelzebub <laughs> Uh, but uh, to chosen believers for the purpose of them bearing witness to 
to people of the, that very fact uh, of the gospel and the very fact that God had raised him from the dead, validating that he was indeed the Son of God and that he bore our sins on the cross. So now we're going to move on beyond the first division of uh, the, the quarterly and discuss verses 41 through 43. Verse 41 reads, Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even so, who did, I'm sorry, even us rather, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Now, I think the standard commentary, I'm not the standard, but the quarterly commentary suggests that he ate and, ate and drank with them during his earthly ministry, but this is specifically after he rose from the dead. And we know uh, from Acts chapter 1, I believe, when Jesus um, ate broiled fish uh, with them after his resurrection, uh, after he had had them uh, catch a, a large uh, draft of fish. I'm sorry, that's from uh, John chapter 21. Read John chapter 21 and you see where Jesus had uh, his disciples um, catch a, a huge load of fish and then join him uh, for fish on the, sh on the shore. But what, uh, what Peter is saying here is that, hey, we, we, we were eyewitnesses. We were chosen among the chosen eyewitnesses of his resurrection. And, and, and actually, uh, we, and John goes on, uh, the, the apostle John goes on in, in uh, his epistle, first epistle, he said, we, 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 we handle him. You know, we, he, he was, he's trying to, 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 to uh, get people to understand that he was not a spirit. He was bodily resurrected. And, and we know, of course, uh, there were those who um, were trying to, um, uh, the Judaizers that were trying to convince uh, even believers that, that if God, uh, Jesus rose, it was a spiritual resurrection and not a bodily resurrection. Let's go on. Uh, verse 42 says, And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that he <coughs> is he which was ordained of God to be judge, the judge of the quick and the dead. So Jesus was ordained of God, declared by God to be by God to be the judge of the living, the quick, and the dead, the impartial judge. Um, and, and, and we know when Jesus rose, he declared that all power in heaven and earth had been given unto him. Now, he also said uh, during his earthly ministry that he did not come to condemn. He came to save during his first advent. But on his second advent, when he returns, uh, Revelation tells us he's going to come with a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. And that is the word which is cutting, going, and coming. And he's going to destroy all the enemies of God. So, um, again, Peter is, 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 is uh, explaining, this is part of the gospel, uh, who Jesus is. Uh, and, he, and they were commanded to testify, to give the testimony of Jesus. When Jesus gave the Great Commission, he says, he told them to teach everything that he had declared done to them. You know, and they were, of course, to baptize. They were to make disciples, but they were to uh, uh, to teach what he had taught them, and God had, and the Lord Jesus had taught them who he was and and his mission and his uh, and, and and ultimately his lordship over all and his judgeship over all. Verse forty three reads: To him give all the prophets witness. And through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins or the forgiveness of sin. Now, Cornelius most likely had some knowledge of the Old Testament prophets. You know, he was a man that feared God and, and, and obviously was seeking God. Uh, and of course, in those days, all that was available was uh, the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, the, the law, the prophets and the Psalms. Uh, uh, the uh, and the, the Torah, if you will, the, the 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 prophets and the Psalms, and 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 of course, uh, he may have been familiar with uh, you know Isaiah, uh, who spoke of uh, the how uh, 
the people would be forgiven of their iniquity in Isaiah 33, 24, uh, or the one who was wounded for our transgressions, Isaiah 53, 5, the righteous servant who would justify many, Isaiah 53, 11. Uh, he may have uh, been familiar with uh, Jeremiah speaking of how the Lord would forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more, Jeremiah 31, 34. Uh, or maybe when Daniel spoke of the time that would bring uh, the end of sin and the Lord would make reconciliation for iniquity, Daniel 9, 24. So he may have been familiar with the Old Testament witnesses of the servant of the Lord, but not knowing who he was and what his full mission was or how he was going to accomplish what the Old Testament prophets had prophesied that he would. So now we're going to move into uh, the second division uh, from the standard. We're already into the second division of the quarterly, which is the gospel to all, second division of the standard, which is entitled Two Outcomes, begins at verse 44. And it reads, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. So Peter is no doubt, uh, he may have been speaking for some time. I think what has been um, recorded, what was recorded between verses 34 and 43 may have been a condensation of a larger message. And one of the commentators thinks there may have been some interruptions with questions or what have you. But, but Peter is, uh, while he is speaking, the Holy Ghost falls on them. And we'll see in a minute how that is evidenced, okay? But, uh, and that, that certainly means that God has accepted them uh, as he did those believers that were in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, when Pentecost had fully come. So, you know, those Jews who came with Peter <clears throat> might have doubted whether uh, these Gentiles uh, understood Peter or whether they believed the message, uh, but when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost fell on them, uh, that was clear evidence that God had accepted them. Verse 45 reads, And they of the circumcision, the Jews, uh, which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, and that was six, as I recall, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit and, the, and our Holy Ghost. They were astonished because, again, they thought uh, from their earliest training uh, that the Gentiles uh, were unclean. The Gentiles were dogs, and God cared nothing about them. He only cared about his chosen people. They assumed they were all lost. Uh, and as, as I said, it was... Uh, 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 a defilement that they could become ceremonial, uh, ceremonially unclean to even enter into their house or, or to have dinner with them. So uh, this was their background and of course God is doing something in their heart uh, as he is uh, in the Gentiles heart. He's breaking down that middle wall of petition. So uh, if they thought that, uh, well, uh, they, they, they couldn't deny uh, the clear evidence that God had accepted them in verse 46a gives the evidence of that for they for they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God that was the same evidence that God had given to the Jewish believers in the upper room on the day of Pentecost they didn't speak in ecstatic languages or unknown languages they spoke in foreign languages that were unknown to them Okay, we could say a lot more about that, but uh, this was clear evidence as uh, that the Holy Spirit had come, had indwelled them, and again, they call him the gift, and we all have this gift, all believers have this gift. We haven't spoken in, in other tongues, most of us, uh, but he's given us all this gift of the Holy Spirit, who is our the paracletos, the one who walks alongside us, who comfort us, comforts us, who is our our, our guide in truth, who is um, uh, uh, our, 
power who enables us to be walk victoriously uh, uh, as the Lord would have us and to, and to resist sin. Uh, and let's move on here. We're, we're, we're rounding the corner to the end. Uh, again, this was evidence. Uh, th this was God's divine authentication of Gentile inclusion in his family of uh, believers. Okay. Now, um, verse 46b through 47 says, Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water? that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. Now, in the first century church, the baptism followed uh, as a response to the gospel message and faith in Jesus Christ. When a person received the message, believed it, then that person was baptized as an outward uh, profession or sign of their belief. Uh, and that is what it is, baptism is an outward sign just as the circumcision was among the Jews of now our relationship with God. Uh, and so uh, he asked the rhetorical question, can, hey, can anybody, you know, you've seen God has authenticated uh, their relationship with him or their belief in him, can anybody forbid baptizing them? And of course, again, that was a rhetorical question. And I hope that we have I've gotten a little better understanding of this passage. Um, as I said, it goes on to uh, chapter 11, verse uh, 8, when uh, Peter gets back to the, the Jews, you know, they 20 question him about how could you possibly go into a Gentile's house and, and this, that, and the other, and then eat with them and what, what have you, I think, uh, fellowship with them and what have you. And then Peter recounts everything that happened, you know, about his vision and about uh, the Holy Spirit falling on him. He said, hey, if God chose them, how could we do anything else? And that was the end of that discussion. We know that there were other um, <clears throat> issues to be addressed, other identity markers, one of the commentators says, of God's people, such as circumcision, dietary laws, and observances of special days. Uh, that would continue to play, but uh, those questions were settled at what became the famous Jewish council in Acts chapter 15. These external markers were no longer essential to, God, to the people of God. God is not a respecter of persons, but God is a respecter of faith. God accept, we are accepted by God uh, when we accept the gift that God has given us, and that is the sacrifice of his, his Son, His only begotten Son, for our sins. So again, I pray that uh, we have understood this lesson a little better than we may have in the past or this passage. So God, we do thank and praise you again for, um, again, your precious word. Again, we pray that uh, we would not only be hearers of your word, but doers, Lord, as uh, you give us understanding, Lord, increase our faith and our obedience in your word. Bless every household uh, within the sound of my voice, Lord, and we pray you keep them in your loving care until such time as we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. One, one quick announcement I'd like to make. Uh, for those of you who would like to be involved in an interactive Sunday school class, please join uh, the class uh, on Saturday afternoons between 4.30 at 6 p.m. that is facilitated by uh, sisters Quincy Humphrey, mother Quincy Humphrey, and uh, trustee Jeanette Brown. And uh, the dial-in number, they do this over the phone, is 1-605-475-4000. Again, 605-475-4000. And the access code is three one four three two five pound sign three one four two five pound sign please join them they have a very active class interactive class in which you can ask questions and participate with the group again may god bless you and keep you